Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about something that's very important for all merchants out there. Uh, it's about automation. Obviously, you want to save as much as time in your business to focus on the things that are really matter. And a lot of tasks that you have on a day-to-day -day business, you can basically automate. And how that can be done and what the best way to do this, that's what we want to talk about today. So with me on the show today, I have Joe. He is the founder of orderautomator.com. And he has been a Shopify developer for over 10 years, a Shopify store owner for eight years, and founded a Shopify optimization and development agency called Speedbuster that he sold in 2022. And now he runs a automator app, which basically helps merchants with automating their tasks. So I want to dive right into that. One thing I want to mention, he's also a traveler like I am. So he's traveling since 2015. So Joe and I have a lot of in common there. Hi, Joe, how are you today? Great, great. Thanks, Klaus. Great to meet you, meet you and hang out. Joe, beside of traveling, um, another thing we both like is automation. So I'm a big fan of automation. It yeah. uh, helps a lot, specifically recurring tasks, boring tasks. There's a lot of things you can do to make your life a little bit easier. Now, you're in the Shopify space for a long time and probably um, have have, or you have automated a lot of things also as a Shopify merchant. What got you into automation in the first place? Yeah, for me, um, you know, I was running uh, just uh, traveling and, and managing multiple businesses. I had a, a Shopify store and the uh, optimization agency, and I was doing consulting for Shopify stores. I was just all in on the ecosystem there. And uh, for me, it was just, um, you know, always looking to free up my time. I'm, I'm passionate about nature, so I just wanted to, like, figure out ways to free up more time, to spend more time outside of the computer. And so with that, combined with um, just being a store owner and identifying things that we could automate to either um, automate tedious tasks or automate, uh, you know, uh, increasing in sales and traffic, all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of got obsessed with it, obsessed with it and did a bunch of experimentations and uh, being a, a developer. I started um, creating custom solutions and, and later apps to uh, help job by store owners to automate different things in the, in the, that in the store. Okay, let's dive into these different tasks. You said you automated a lot of things. There was for sure some kind of priority list, things that are easier to automate and things that are, might be a little bit more complicated um, to get into automation. What were the first things that you were thinking about to automate and have them run on their own in the back end? Yeah, yeah, I got. I have a, a few things to to, to go through, uh, and I'm just gonna probably um, you know touch on these pretty briefly. But I just wanted to say that um, that there's also um, I'm, I'm putting all this uh, a detailed guide on our website. It'll be um, orderautomator.com/slash/shopify-automation-tips, and um, so uh, I'm gonna have a detailed guide with different links and resources, things that I've used, and diving in more. Uh, but just to go over um, some of the, the the ideas here, and hopefully uh, you know a couple of them will will stand out for store owners that haven't thought about or haven't used it yet. Um, but the very foundation, the basic, which um, a lot of experienced uh, stores will already have this, but um, I with all the a lot of early phase stores I've worked with, and just a lot of even stores doing decent sales didn't have like a lot of basics automated. Like so, um, you know your uh, virtual assistant, um, your customer support, your fulfillment, uh, your email marketing. Um, I think the very first thing is setting up an email marketing flow. Uh, I like Clavio app for that, uh, but there's a lot out there. Um, so that's selling, um, you know, giving first time offers, first time visitor offers, doing cross sales, um, birthday discounts, all these with ads are always getting more expensive every year. So that's uh, a key one. Again, obvious for an experienced business, but not set up all the time. Um, fulfillment, um, yeah, with our store, we, we were like, uh, you know, my business partner was just fulfilling out of his house when we first started and eventually, you know, things grew. So we ended up connecting, um, selling on Amazon too, which opened up a whole new channel and then, um, connecting Amazon FBA with Shopify. And then that's what the, my app, um, order automator does. It helps like automate that type of process. So whether it's uh, Amazon or Shopify Fulfillment Network, ShipBob, Deliver, there's a bunch of other places, but modern fulfillment. And then just hiring people just to do tasks. Any tasks that you're doing as like a, a business owner, I think is uh, great to just start creating, get that uh, habit of creating SOPs, standard operating procedures, and have a VA um, handle those for you. 
So with, with just that basic stuff out of the way, um, one of my favorite um, things that, that we did that like showed a noticeable jump in improvements was creating an affiliate program. Um, so with that, what we would do is create, uh, you know, there's a few apps there as well, Refersion, Referral Candy examples, but um, create an affiliate program and then reach out to influencers, blogs, uh, holiday shopping guides, all kinds of websites, pitch them on your program. Um, and for the bigger ones, you can offer free products. Uh, but basically you get, you build up an, uh, eventually you build up an army of affiliates that are promoting you, linking to you, um, on their website, on their YouTube channel, doing Instagram shout outs. Um, it just creates this automated flow of traffic that just keeps increasing every month and it's referral traffic, which tends to convert higher. Um, so aside from that, like a bonus that, um, you know, secondary bonus is you get a lot of extra backlinks um with doing little work so you get your seo rankings uh bumped up there and then and then go back to stage step one if you have a virtual assistant and you create an sop step one um research you know uh blogs and, and our product niche whatever you can have your detailed keywords for them uh research these people reach out with this template, mix it up, add some personalization, track the people you reach out on a spreadsheet, follow up, and just do that month over month to continue building more uh, affiliates. So I like that. Um, and, uh, kind of a similar traffic venue, there's an app called Clickly um, that you um, can, they, they allow you to set a commission rate. So say you say 20%, I wanna attribute 20% of every sale. Uh, they'll drive traffic to your site through interstitial ads uh, across the internet and you only pay per conversion. So it's kind of like a hybrid model. Um, that one we also noticed uh, just an instant boost in traffic and sales and it's a guaranteed positive ROI. So uh, I'm not sure, I haven't dealt with that area for a while. There might be other apps out there, but basically they're kind of like uh, commission-based advertising apps. Um, yeah, next up, I got um, print-on-demand products um, or drop shipping uh, integrated. Even if you're uh, just sell your own products, you have a manufacturer. Um, just adding a new channel, um, you know, I really like the print-on-demand stuff. The margins are lower, but it's once you connect through the app, you just, for example, if you're doing clothing or accessories, you just upload your design. Everything syncs. Now it's on your website. And you basically just add this extra sales channel and products that you have, you don't put any work into at all because it's fully automated. So those are good to look in for, especially for clothing brands. Um, another uh, kind of expanding marketplace is, uh, or another idea in that area is expanding marketplaces. So um, one that, um, that I like, for example, is using Etsy. Uh, which we hadn't thought about for a while because we weren't like hand making stuff, but um, they, uh, they're they expanded. There's a lot of brands are just selling, uh, you know, their products on Etsy as well. So it's an easy to expand channel and you can use an app called said commerce integration, Etsy integration that automatically syncs your products, puts them on Etsy, Etsy, and then it automatically imports the orders to Shopify. So another way just to get, with no work involved, basically just have more traffic, more sales coming in, uh, full automation. Uh, check out upsell is another one. Uh, is it okay if I just go through this list like this, just to make sure I cover sure. the basic? Okay. 100%. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Like, uh, cause I'm open just like, you know, some, some people might already have some of these things, but some people are like, oh, that's a cool idea. I've tried that. Uh, but, uh, check out upsell, um, type of apps. So these are cool because, um, it happens after, I mean, upsell is always good, like during the, um, during the shopping, uh, the customer journey. Um, sometimes um, too many upsells um, or pop-ups or something can cause friction and uh, could lower the conversion rate. Uh, but the good thing about the, the post checkout upsell apps is that uh, the conversion's already made and it's just like, oh, by the way, here's one other offer. So um, you have nothing to lose and then, um, I've used a, a handful of apps on that, but um, the 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 models uh, differ. Some of them you you might pay, you only pay it on the conversions that happen. Um, some of them are monthly, but uh, you, if you pay on the conversions that happen, you're it's a guaranteed positive ROI. And again, another automated uh, marketing channel. So those are cool. You set up rules like okay, if someone bought uh, this product, 
offer them this uh, accessory that goes with it for you know 10% off or, or however you offer one to do. So that I've noticed generates automatic sales. Uh, and then another checkout type of situation, you can tie this in with your referral program. Uh, the, I'll have links to the apps to do that, um, but they have an automated setup. So you can, uh, when someone buys something, you can say, hey, share this purchase with your friends or share, share this discount code with your friends. They get X percent off their first order. You get X percent off your next order. Um, and everybody wins. And so that is another method. The sales already happened. So you're just a, a percentage of those people are guaranteed going to convert and it's a fully automated system. So I think we're worth experimenting with. Um, and then there's also bundling. So before the sale, so we spent a lot of time um, working on how can we Traffic acquisition is always more expensive and it gets more every year. So it's always like a constant battle. Like, okay, how can we capitalize more on existing customers about either implication conversion rate or uh, average order value? So with the average order value, um, you know, there's uh, like bundling products and creating cross sell systems. So um, yeah, my, um, we, we've with automator apps, we've created um, custom custom solutions. So we can create, for example, like a custom bundling solution. So if you have a product from collection A and there's a matching product or, exec or uh, accessory product from collection B, we can like um, have it so it automatically shows um, these matching products based on rules. Like if it's in one collection, show it another collection with the matching title or tag. Uh, stuff like that. So we can create like really cool custom features. And so you can, if you sell clothes, you can say like, oh, complete the outfit. Here's all the things that match. Um, and once the system is set up, then that can be auto. Then that's pretty much an automated increase to your average uh, order uh, value uh, because naturally people are going to add to cart. They can just add it right on the page. So yeah, I recommend creating like a bundling system. Um, in that guide, I'll have some ideas. Um, um, there, there are some apps out there that do like, you know, related products or, um, you know, advanced, mostly it's like related products or checkout products from this collection, this type of thing. Um, what we've done with like the, our custom solutions is more specific to the store to, to bundle how they want. Um, and then we, with our, we have a new automation app coming out later this summer. That's going to be, um, that feature is going to kind of be involved uh, in it as well. So, but for right now, yeah, just, uh, there's a lot of apps out there. Um, I remember LimeSpot being a good app, um, that, that I've used in the past for those kind of recommendations. Uh, there's another one that, um, maybe, um, a lot of people haven't tried, but, um, having a cause behind your brand, um, anybody who's done this can recognize like there's a, you get so many benefits out of it, but, but what I mean by that, that is like, instead of just saying, Hey, we're a brand, we sell products. You know, we sell high quality products at a fair price or whatever. That's kind of the generic pitch. Uh, but if you're a brand that's uh, passionate about something or you you give back, um, you can you can see a lot of, of benefits around that. So, for example, I had a company that um, every sale we uh, planted a tree. So, um, and then worked with different parts. So it's a nature based brand. So we're passionate about nature. We appeal to people about that. I, I have friends and I've said worked with people that uh, you know they just uh, I've I've actually spoken on the topic a handful of times, but so I've like researched it a lot and talked to a lot of people. But basically, the basics are like find something that you're passionate about and that makes sense to integrate in your business. Um, so if you sell pet products, then you know you love animals. You sell pet products. You know every sale you donate a percentage to a, adoption charity, or you uh, the the best models are like a one for one, a tangible. So like if you can say okay, if you buy you know this product we donate uh, one meal to an animal in a in need in an adoption center or something like that. Or like if you buy a product, we plant a tree, you know, these type of methods. So the reason I kind of tie that into the automation theme is because what this does is it generates um, word of mouth um, sales. So those, it's like offline, um, uh, offline kind of referrals. So if you, if you have a cause behind your brand, and this is through research and stats that I've done over the years. If you have a cause, like people, well, one, people are more likely to buy your product, uh, especially if it's a, a similar price point than a competitive product, um, even if it costs more a lot of times. 
So um, you're increasing your conversion rate on that. And then also with, um, if you if you excite your users and you connect with them on an emotional level, they're talking about your brand. Like if someone said, hey, uh, cool shirt. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Did you know this company? Uh, you know, they say they, 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 they feed animal. They, 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 they feed they, every time you buy a shirt, they give a meal to a dog and, you know, so you're helping dogs or whatever. Um, so, so it, it creates these talking points and that just creates these, um, untrackable, but very valuable systems of, of getting new referral traffic to your site, um, without paying for it, you know, other than what you're, you know, you're obviously paying for your, uh, your charitable contributions, but creates its whole kind of system. So um, I think that's worth experimenting about or giving it a think about because I think every brand um, could have that opportunity. And I, I think it just overall helps and uh, it, it just, it, it gives you more purpose in the business. So I like that as well. Okay, I 100% agree. The, um, I just saw a stat the other day touching on um, having a course that um, Generation Z, um, they are most likely to buy it from you if you have a course with attached to your business um so yes and the the numbers were actually staggering on uh, what kind of impact that made for the brands using this so a uh, very good point there now the automation so from what you said i think you can break it down in three things you have automation that help you with increasing your revenue um with optimizing your marketing and with optimizing your back-end process your operations um, one thing you touched on in the beginning, and I like that a lot, is that you're creating standard operating procedures for your VAs. And I'm a big fan of doing everything in the beginning in my business on my own, just to understand the process mm -hmm. that I know what I'm talking about. And then basically with standard operating procedures, give that to someone who is either more qualified or more motivated than me doing a specific task. Um, yes. When it comes to autoautomator.com, to your app, there's there's a couple of features in there that help um, with making sure, for instance, you have one um, feature, a, a fraud guard, so um, that you don't get chargebacks and others. Um, how did you come up with these different features to help with automation? Yeah, a lot of the automated, so the app is Order Automator, and a lot of people, um, I, I, basically it was when I was running my store, I was also a Shopify developer. So if we ran into something, that someone on the team was like, oh, yeah, I check orders every single day and I do this. Or, uh, you know, every order that comes in with this type of product, I have to do this. Um, those are the, I kind of gathered those pain points and then said, okay, I'm going to build an automated solution. And eventually that became the order automator app. Um, and then once the app, the, the very first feature was automating Amazon fulfillment. So uh, syncing inventory with Amazon and, um, automatically fulfilling Shopify orders through Amazon, updating the um, tracking. So that's completely hands off for the brand. They just have the product in Amazon. Anytime Shopify comes, it, it's handled on the back end. That was the first feature. And then later, yeah, we added uh, tagging and um, changing locations, different fulfillment stuff. Um, and then uh, it's just on request. Like the 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 philosophy with, with uh, that is with the app side is that, um, we're, we're building stuff for users and they're, they're the best people to get advice from. So we like actively tell people like, Hey, if you have a feature or an idea, let us know and we'll make it happen. Uh, and we do make it happen. And that's where like, um, a lot of our reviews on the app will, 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 will kind of attest to that to where, um, you know, I think that's the best source to is your customers and just go, it goes along with your Shopify store, the best source of ideas for, okay, what products or designs should we do next? Um, I think it's just asking your customers and blasting out to them. 100%. But yeah, and, and and then yeah, with the with the the one of the key features that like uh, you know surprisingly not in Shopify automatically is just help with like identified for project orders. So they have the risk they can say, oh, this is a high risk order. Um, but if you're getting a lot of orders, you might not catch it. You know, you might you have to search through your orders. Uh, like again, that's like a daily ask. Like you could do a bookmark and uh, a daily task. You could bookmark and see the project orders. Um, but if you have systems coming into play where you have uh, fulfillments going out, you know, then you have to be monitoring the orders constantly like that. So the the feature we have in Order Automator, which is in the free version uh, as well, is just to where um, if a high risk or medium risk order comes in, you can automatically have an email sent to support. You can tag the order. Um, you can cancel the order. So uh, most people just 
prevent fulfillment on the order and notify support. So then the order is just chilling until the support can uh, investigate. But it's pe there's people that use our app that have just, you know, hundreds of orders coming in every day and, and a high percentage of uh, fraud orders. They just automatically cancel them. So um, that helps a lot because, uh, yeah, fraud is a pain and the chargebacks are nasty, man. So like just uh, having uh, just a, a system in place to help catch those uh, helps a lot with people. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Chargebacks are a pain in the neck. Um, yeah. Now, you can opt, um, automize a lot of things, outsource a lot of things. Are there certain tasks in a business? Now, I'm asking you as a business owner, are there certain tasks that you would never automize or outsource? Um, I, I generally have a mindset of um, trying to SOP everything and um, trying to automate as uh, optimize or automate as much as possible. I figure... Even stuff that I probably wouldn't um, uh, uh, automate, I would still create an SOP for just to see or just to have on my own. So I think I start with just uh, creating SOPs for everything. And then once you look at it, be like, okay, this could definitely, someone else can do this um, at, at least, you know, uh, on, on a level I can do. Uh, then, then, then that would go. Um, for stuff that I would not um, automate, um, I guess it depends how deep you take the, the, the term automation, because like eventually, and you know, if you hire, if you have an operations manager, they can mostly, then you kind of automate much of your business other than, you know, um, uh, uh you know, significant decisions. Um, you know, I think like product choice is like product design can be, um, you know, hired for obviously, but I think like product choice, I think that's good to be, um, kind of at the owner level because to make sure that you're, uh, you know, okay, what, ne what next product should we do? Is this in line with our values? Does it make sense? Um, you know, doing the research to see if there's demand for this product or this one that we want to do next. Um, so I think that also keeps you at the owner level connected to with your, your brand and your mission overall. So I probably wouldn't automate that, but yeah, some of those just like, you know, top level or owner decisions. Um, but other than that, if something can be SOP'd, I think it's good to um, try, try hiring it out. Okay. No, that makes perfect sense. And I think within the next couple of months, we will see AI solutions coming up that um, will oh, yeah. always automation and uh, will take yep. a lot of things from your plate that don't necessarily need to be there. So where can people find out more about you and your app? Yeah. So um, in the Shopify app store, it's order automator. And um, uh, on our website is orderautomator.com. And, um, you know, we're, we just started uh, a blog there. So we're going to be doing more guides and um, uh, resources for Shopify store owners with the, within the theme of automation. Because um, it's just stuff that I've done for so long. I just have a lot of information built up. Um, and I've written on the topic um on other sites, uh, but we're going to have more resources there at orderautomator.com. So uh, you can check that out. And yeah, the, the the app's useful for a lot of people. And even just the, the, there's a free version that does has the fraud guards. So feel free to check that out. Um, but uh, long term, we're going to have more resources and uh, help with automation, dive into the new stuff, like when uh, you know AI gets more going too, because I'm sure there's going to be, uh, yeah, like you said, ton, ton of opportunities there. Cool. I will put the links in the show notes, then you just one click away. Joel, thanks so much for giving us an overview of what you can optimize in your business um, to free up your time. And then probably one or the other listener or viewer of the show will become a location independent person like the two of us are. Thanks so much oh, for your yeah, time. Yeah, sure. It's a great, it's a great lifestyle. I recommend that. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much. Safe travels. All right. Thank you. Good luck, everybody, on your Shopify store. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? 
but perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.